Here's a quick primer to the simulation results before we begin. Over here on the right hand side, we can show undeformed. That means that there's no uh, deformation being shown in our simulation. Now if we change it to actual, that's going to show the actual model result. Everything else, all of these ones that say adjusted, they're just different representations. So this one is two times, this one is five times. If you come over here to under deformation, it actually tells you the percentage. So adjusted 0.5 is 2.5, adjusted is 5%, and so on and so forth. I'm going to quickly model a torsion spring and create a simulation for it in Autodesk Fusion 360. Now, the first thing we want to do is come over here to our planes and choose the XZ plane. With it selected, we want to come to Create, come down to Coil, and we're going to create a sketch of 2, 2 inches, and within the Coil Wizard, we want to set our diameter to 2 inches, our revolutions to 8.999, our height to 2.25, we want our angle to be 0, our section to be circular, section position is on center, and the section size is going to be 0.25. And with all of those parameters dialed in, you should get a result that looks something like this. So I'm going to hit OK. And to make this a real torsion spring, what I want to do is I want to click on this face and create a sketch. And I'm going to click on the face, hit P on the keyboard, and I'm going to project that face. And with it projected, I can come to Solid, Extrude, and I can extrude this out about 1.5 inches. Sorry, we want that to be an extrusion. So instead of cut, we want it to be a join. And we want to do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to click on this face. Click on Create Sketch. Click on the face. Hit P on the keyboard. And just project that circle once more. And we're going to do the same thing here. So extrude it. And we're going to make that 1.5 inches and we're going to hit OK and from here we have our torsion spring design so what we want to do is we want to just save this and we're going to come to simulation and static stress is selected by default we're going to hit create study and we are now in our static simulation environment. We're going to come up to materials and from the drop down we're going to come down to study materials and we're going to scroll to the steel section and we want to select a steel and we're going to we're going to choose stainless steel just for fun and we're just going to hit OK. Now that material is selected and so what we want to do next is we want to go right back to our model and we're going to come to our XZ plane. We're going to create a sketch on this plane and make a circle from the origin and just drag it out. You don't need to dimension this. Hit finish sketch. Now come to surface, extrude, and just drag this up and just hit OK. And now let's go back to our simulation environment because what we need to do next after constraints is going to be the load and we're going to use this in our load so let's come down to constraints and we're going to click on structural constraints I'm going to select this face and this back face and I'm just going to hit OK and that's going to fix them in place and so when while those are fixed we can come down to loads and we can come down to angular global load so here we're going to come to axis and for the axis we're going to select um, this 
face that we created, this uh, surface. And I can change the direction if I'd like. So I want the direction to be flipped because uh, that's, that's the direction of the force that we want. So now it's pointing in the direction of uh, this leg here. And we need to set a magnitude. So I'm going to set a magnitude of 100 degrees per second. And under acceleration, I can click under acceleration and I can do the same thing here. So we have 100 set on both of them. And the next thing we want to do is we want to look at this whole part from the side. And we're going to take this arrow and just drag it all the way up to here. Now the reason why I drag this all the way up is because I want this arrow to be aligned with the top leg. That's what we want to do the, our uh, test on. That's what we want to be pushing um, angularly within our test. So I'm going to hit OK. And now I can come to the pre-check. And you're going to see that there are a bunch of issues here. But um, we can still run a simulation just with what we have. And with the simulation now finished, I can change my deformation scale to be adjusted by 5. And that's going to have uh, this result on it. Um, I can also choose to make it um, adjusted by uh, 0.5, uh, depending on, on what I want this to look like. So if I change from safety factor to displacement, that's going to give me a much better picture of what's going on here. So the displacement is telling me how much the part has moved from its original shape. And you can see that with that, that torsion, there's more stress near the top of the spring where it's being pushed. And there's just less and less and less and less and less as you go down. And at the bottom here, this is the fixed leg. That leg really doesn't move at all. And so it's, it's no surprise that it has a zero. But at the top, top it, there's a lot more movement there. And you can also change this to be strain. So you can see how much strain there is on the material. So here you can see that there's a lot of strain near the bottom and not as much at the top. So it's kind of like an interesting um, sort of thing to learn from your design. So we're going to close this and I'm going to finish results. And now what I want to do is I want to come to my loads and I want to apply now a structural load. So this is going to be a force and the force is going to be acting on a target of my choosing. So for instance, I can choose to, to click on this face and I can change the angle of the force so I can I can choose to kind of make it just 90 degrees from my original uh, face and I need to choose a magnitude here so I'm gonna type in 300 uh, newtons and I, I could change this to pounds of force if I want and that's gonna automatically convert it so right now that this is 67 pounds of force let's make it an even 100 pounds of force and we're just gonna hit OK and now we can run our simulation we're gonna see a really helpful kinda of image here uh, you can see that the minimum safety factor is obviously lower than what we would want. Now the adjusted 5x is a little bit um, it's a little bit unrealistic. So we can just change this to actual. And you're gonna see the amount of uh, deform displacement here is huge. Now I can cycle through these and I can get a better idea of what's going on. And you can see that the safety factor is very low um, in the middle of the spring. But if we come back to our displacement, um, I think that's, that's also a very clear picture of what's going on. Um, so also up here, you can, you can change these from the top here. So I, I can go to undeformed if that helps me more. But um, that's our simulation. Now if I close this, um, I can come down to where it says load cases. 
and I can come down to load and I can right click and just edit exactly the amount of force that I'm applying. So instead of 100 pounds of force, what if we switch it to just 10? That's going to be much less than before. So I'm just going to solve this one more time. So these results are at least a little bit more realistic um, in terms of the force that we're applying. So if I change this to 5x, you could see that it's really not as bad as before. So I'm going to change this to actual. And you can see that the displacement is much more than we want, but it's still um, it's still much better than before. So um, hopefully that helps you to understand uh, how to do simulations of a spring in Autodesk Fusion 360.